That was cool. <laughs> wow. You pushed it so far, Mike. Oh my God. Too far. That's insane. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm so mind blown that that was all After Effects. That's, that's insane. All right, everybody. We are here to show off Crate's Height Relighter. It is my personal favorite feature for the LaForge plugin because the possibilities are seriously endless. And this is just a capability that I think everybody who uses After Effects has wanted since the beginning of time. And now with LaForge, it's actually here. So the three of us each came up with our own cool video demonstration. We haven't seen each other's projects, so we're gonna show it here today and see what everybody came up with. So I'll go first because I think mine is probably the simplest. Hey guys, I wanted to make a very quick and pretty cool little MoGraph example using the High cool. Relighter preset in LaForge. This is what I came up with. What I really like about it is that we have pretty realistic shadow and a light capture just using After Effects in the LaForge plugin. I'm also using some fire and some aerial dust elements from footagecrate.com to just kind of bring everything together. Now, there is no real good way to make this kind of effect before LaForge. You could do it using 3D software, but having the compositing control inside of After Effects to create this 3D looking effect is really pretty incredible. And it was so, 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 so simple to set up. I think that's my favorite part. It takes minimal knowledge and understanding of how these things actually work to get really good results and get them really, really quickly. The brick elements are just from rendercrate.com. I grabbed them from the material architecture. I think it was this one ancient limestone. So that's what I'm using. And I'm using the actual height or displacement layer for LaForge if I jump into that. So I'm just using this displacement map for the lighting of the bricks themselves. And then for the text, the indented or kind of carved engraved LaForge text is just a slightly darker gray, while the height relighter text is a white. And then that's just animated character by character to change from zero opacity all the way up. And that just kind of fakes the look of it starting completely like flat and flush against the wall while the embossed text or whatever kind of lifts out of the wall while the uh, LaForge text kind of gets engraved in. I could have spent a little more time and maybe added some falling dust elements or something, but essentially just this extremely simple setup is what is powering this entire animation here. I of course added uh, some crack elements from Footage Crate as well because I like breaking stuff. The shadows that High Relighter creates are really, really nice. They have a lot of dimension and, and kind of really sell the believability. And look how fast this is. I mean, it's just insane. So to give it more of that like torch fire flickery effect, I just animated the shadow scatter with a wiggle expression and the light intensity with a wiggle expression as well. And that just gives the fire more of a natural movement. Then all I did was parent the flame to the position of the light that is moving. And that's it. There's just one. Actually, there's two lights in the scene. We also have kind of like a moonlight. Let me solo the uh, LaForge layer here. We also have kind of like a moonlight blue up above. It's really, really subtle, but that just kind of gives it kind of a, a nice ambient light. Here, let me turn off light one so we can see what that blue light is doing. Just a nice kind of soft fill. And then I just attached everything to a knoll and just did a fake zoom with the scale parameters. And that's how I created this in like less than an hour to set this whole thing up. And that is my example using the height relighter in LaForge. I'm really excited to see what you guys came up with. God damn. <laughs> that was cool. Sweet. Wow. It's cool to have like on Render Crate or all the other uh, like 3D material websites out there. They're not really useful in After Effects for most things. And now mm -hmm. like with this, they are like we can we can use any of our 3D materials for that, you know, like 2D wall type look and get um, actual like height information that that is useful. The way the way the text was animated as well, so that it really did look like it was sinking into the bricks. It's like um that Harry Potter scene where the the brick wall was like yeah. unfolding or something. Yeah, oh I actually God. I wanted to try uh, that one, but I wanted to get it done a little more quickly. But yeah, yeah. I loved um, that orange text as well. It felt like uh, those classic uh, 
games that's like jungly based or something. Kong. <laughs> Donkey Kong, totally. All right, Mike, let's uh, check out what you got. Whoa. What? Okay, for my effect, I really wanted to try something different. I'd done a lot of weird abstract experimental stuff with height relight, but this time I wanted to make something practical that could be integrated into an actual shot. I was inspired by Angelina Jolie's powers in The Eternals, so my goal was to create cool geometric mandalas and then use height relight to create dynamic 3D lighting. I started by generating a couple of grid layers and animating them in a very simple way. Since this would eventually be used like a height map, I increased the feathering a bit to give it a beveled look later on in height relight. First though, to make it more complex and intricate, I used the Kaleidoscoper preset from LaForge and I animated a bulge slider at the beginning to make it feel like it was exploding from a central point. And then I animated a circular mask to make it seem like it was expanding. Just to give it a bit more structure, I also manually added a few circles in there and applied a little Gaussian blur to each one to give it a beveled look later on. Next, I pre-comped it and applied height relight. I changed two of the light colors to give it a dark gold look with a bright yellow highlight. And for the third light, I used a bright contrasting blue. You'll see why in a sec. To knock out the background, I used another copy of the animation as a track mat. I asked Nico to look heroic on screen for a few seconds and he sent me this. And now you can see why I used a blue rim light. Height relight is great because you can really quickly change the lighting to match your background footage. I motion tracked the effect to Nico's hand and it felt a little lacking to me, but I'm not very experienced with After Effects, so I didn't really know how to improve it. But then I thought about this infected type kit that we just released. I actually used Height Relight to generate the animated 3D textures for them, so I decided to try the same thing here. Chris and David are way better than me at After Effects, so I knew I had to pull out all the stops to impress them. We 3D tracked the footage of Nico in the Byplay app, and then I used our new mannequin character to try to match his movements. I didn't quite get it perfect, but that's okay, it's just an experiment. Next time I think I'll use one of those AI mocap programs or something. Okay, back in Height Relight, I turned on this Render Normals checkbox, which creates a really convenient normal map, which you can use in Maya or Blender. I exported that as a PNG sequence, along with my original animation. In Maya, I applied a gold material to the mannequin, and I used the animation sequence as opacity, along with the normal map. The result was... okay. I felt like it lacked detail when applied to his body, so I jumped back into After Effects and repeated the entire process, but instead of starting with a grid this time, I started with cell noise and cranked up the detail. Every other step in the process was exactly the same as before. LaForge is so quick that I really didn't mind doing it all again. So I rendered out the footage, I dropped it on top of Nico, did a little bit of masking, tried to accept my mistakes, and it was done. For a first experiment, I'm pretty proud of this, I'm pretty excited with how it looks. I learned a lot and it gave me a ton of new ideas for how I can use LaForge in my next 3D projects. Hey, god damn. Dude, Mike. You pushed it you, so far, Mike. Oh my god. Too far. That's insane. <laughs> Are you when the video started, usually you can tell how something's done. Like you can see, oh, oh, they probably did this or this. But when your video started, I genuinely had no idea where you began because it was so dynamic and organic the way it moved and uh, the geometry kind of like sliced into each other there was no way i could have predicted how you would have pulled it off but the way that you combined after effects and 3d in such a tight way was so incredible yeah my goal was so that david wouldn't know how i did it <laughs> that was my whole goal <laughs> <laughs> yeah it kind of had like a venom meets like the eternals feel like there's like a cool mm -hmm. like morphing liquid this to it. How long did it take you to do the um like match move for the body positioning? Um, it probably was like three hours of animating. That's I, I key, hand keyframed it. I definitely want to try it with that Rococo mocap, but I wasn't sure if it would work with a moving camera, so I have to experiment. It's insane how like how well it looked integrated into the footage. I think it's because it was all metallic and reflective and stuff. It just worked so well, and it's actually. Usually when we use high to relight, it's um, usually for very diffused textures like the rock brick texture that Chris mm -hmm. used, but the mm -hmm. way you used it in such a, a shiny way, that was really cool. Yeah, good stuff, Mike. That was really cool. Um, David, the final presentation. I don't think I can top that because, you know, I just sat in After Effects comfortably while making my project, but Mike went all over the VFX pipeline to make his... That's crazy. No. What? 
can you believe this was made in After Effects? No. So anyway, I <laughs> no. began by extracting a height map from this awesome website and then imported it into my composition. Precompose the layer and then use a curves effect to flatten the ocean. Enable the 3D checkbox and then rotate it until it's flat. Precompose it again and then add a 3D camera. Enable collapse transforms and then rotate the camera so that you can find a nice area to look at. Using LaForge, we can now add the height relight preset. I can then adjust the colors of the lights to make it look like it's being illuminated by some candles. Now, I don't like the look of this shadow here, so I will increase the quality by going to the code editor. And if I go to this line yes. here and reduce the value and apply the preset again, the shadow looks so oh much better. Wow. I like to increase the shadow length because the lighting looks so much more dramatic. Now, if you hit play, you can see that the landscape still looks kind of flat. And this is where the magic comes in. You can use a duplicate layer of the height information and use this as a displacement map using right. crates distortion. Set the X multiplier to zero and disable <laughs> the blend iterations and oh, you get what? this incredible three-dimensional do looking it? effect. Oh my god! A masked <laughs> gray layer can be used to reduce the intensity of the displacement no in the distance. This is then matted onto the height map layer so that the adjustment layer can accurately displace <laughs> every layer beneath it. I then used a colorama oh. effect to color another height map layer with a multiply transfer mode so that we can actually begin coloring mm. the terrain. Oh, this cool. is undoubtedly the most enjoyable part of the process oh because we God, can get dude. so creative here. In another composition, I created this fun animated so paint true. layer. <laughs> and we can once again <laughs> multiply a 3D layered version of this so that it sticks on top of the map. It's so satisfying looking at how the paint and the lines follow the shape of the terrain. I then created a new layer with a light sweep effect so that we can drive the intensity of a camera blur for some depth mm, of field. Cool. And as a final touch, some chromatic aberration using LaForge is a great way to finalize a project. And there we go. I hope you learned something. It looks so good. That's God crazy. Damn. It looks so freaking good. So you used, what, three or four different LaForge shaders? The height relight was used for the shading. The mm -hmm. displacement was used to make it look 3D without mm -hmm. it really being 3D. And then we can add uh, things like chromatic aberration if we actually just want to spice it up and polish it with a final bit of color and lens distortion. Just seeing your video got me so freaking excited about the distortion effect. What is different about that preset than the uh, the native one in After Effects. So many years ago, we had a tutorial on how to create a lava floor. And one of the magic tricks that we used in there is that we used several displacement effects to create the appearance of it being 3D. But in that case, we had to use something like 10 multiple copies of the same effect to make it actually work. So in LaForge, we just made a version of the displacement effect that only requires one, and it's far more customizable. There are so many other parameters. You can use chromatic aberration on the displacement. You can blend the iterations so that it creates a ghostly, foggy displacement. Um, and there's a few other tricks in there that I should cover in a future video. I, I'm just I'm so mind blown that that was all After Effects. It's, that's insane. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to try LaForge today, you can download a free watermarked version from the Production Create website. We are incredibly busy creating new tutorials and videos showcasing the million potentials that are possible inside of LaForge. And we are so excited to show you everything that's about to come out. So stay tuned, subscribe, comment if you have any questions, join our Discord, and thank you for watching. And remember to make it awesome.